All right, Shalom. Glad to be back, man. Been meaning to bust this out. It's a long book, though. I've been reading through it. You can see right here, it's 258 pages. So I think I got up to um, 99, almost 100. So I'm going to keep on going. Keep on going. Um, okay, so this one here. It's going to be a short one, man. I, I got read up to about, um, like I said, in this video, going to be up to page 85. We're going to get up into Columbus even. We're going to go Bacalao, Seven Cities, Pre Prebister, John, Portugal and Africa, and Columbus. Um, and uh, this was... Um, I thought exclusively about the Portuguese, but it turns out later on it has Spanish history as well. Okay, so we're going to start right here in the year 1153 in the time of Frederick Barbarossa. Frederick Barbarian, it is written that there came to Lubeck, a city of Germany, one canoe with certain Indians like unto a long barge which seem to have come from the coast of Bacalaos. Bacalaos, you know, I said, hmm, what's that? Which standeth in the same latitude that Germany doth. The Germans greatly wondered to see such a barge and such people, not knowing from whence they came, nor understanding their speech, especially because there was then no knowledge of that country as now there is. Um, and so, uh, you know, I went and Googled uh, Bacalaos, and this map came up. And uh, you can see it says America, Pars, Borealis, Florida, Bacalaos, Canada, Corteria, Lease. And um, I don't know. I don't know, this don't say much, but what does say much is right here. This map costs $38,000, $38,500. But, um, and you can see that it's kind of, it's small, man. And I was like, dang, how am I going to, the print is small. I thought, no way I'll be able to find this Bacalaos. Um, and, and I don't know, I don't know how I seen it, man. All I know is that uh, I seen a video by somebody else uh, talking about Norm Bega. And then uh, I think uh, somebody else just did one like yesterday, but I think it was, uh, it was a video from probably a year ago or something, Norm Bega. It's an ancient city in North America. And it just so happens that uh, there it is. B A C C A L A O. I mean, I can get in there. I could try to get in there a little closer. Let's see. What's oh, actually backing out, huh? Well, that didn't help. I wonder if going smaller will get it bigger. Whoops. Okay, let's just go to 100. Anyway, I'm, um, I mean, take my word for it. I know it's not real clear, but B A C A allows, back allows. And I mean, you could look it up, but uh, there ain't no information on no back allows except uh, in this book. So there it is. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the seven cities, which is on page 72. Okay. Um...
So, okay, in the year, I'm not sure, it's somewhere on this page, so we might end up reading the whole page, I don't remember. In this year also, 1447, it happened that there came a Portugal ship through the Strait of Gibraltar, and being taken, taken with a great tempest, was forced to run westwards, more than willingly, the men would, and at last they fell upon an island which had seven cities. Now, what 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 we've been looking at with Antilia um, is uh, the seven cities of gold, the seven cities of gold. And so, uh, and matter of fact, Antilia was the one that said that it actually had seven cities on that island. So, you know, here's more supporting evidence of those seven cities. Um, and the people spoke the Portugal tongue, and they demanded if the Moors did yet trouble Spain. They, they wanted to know if the Moors did yet trouble Spain once they had fled from the loose, which they received by the death of the king of Spain, Don Rodrigo. Um, you know, we can go to... Uh, we can go to... No, I don't think Antilia is going to come up. But seven cities of gold will come up. Um, but, um, so this one here is kind of it, but, but we'll see this. Seven cities of gold. Okay. <clears throat> seven cities of gold, also known as the seven cities of Cibola, a myth that was popular in the 16th century. It's also featured in several works. Uh, the seven cities of gold could be found throughout the pueblos of New Mexico. Besides Cibola, names associated with similar lost cities of gold include El Dorado, Paititi, City of the Caesars, Lake Parimi at Manoa, Antila, and Quivira. Okay. So that's that. And then um, Pribister John is just a few. 78. Whoop. Went too far. Okay, here we go. Um, from thence they went to Alexandria and so to Cairo and thence the Haven of Toro. Let me go back. I just, that's not the start of that paragraph. So there we go. In the year 1487, King John sent a discoverer, sent to discover India over land, in which journey went one Pedro de Cuyacan, a servant of the kings, and Alfonso de Pena, because they could speak the Arabian tongue. They went out in the month of May of the same year, and they took shipping at Naples and arrived in the Isle of Rhodes and lodged in the house that was provided for the Portugal Knights of that order. From thence they went to Alexandria, and so to Cairo, and thence to the haven of Toro, in the company of the caravans or carriers, which were Moors. There they took shipping, and being on the Red Sea, they arrived at the city of Aden, and there they separated themselves. For Alfonso de Pena went towards Ethiopia, and Pedro de Cuyacan into India, who came into the cities of Kenor and Calicut, and came back unto Goa. I was reading, I don't remember what I was reading about Goa, man, that's an interesting... It must have been from this. I think it comes up later in the reading, too. Anyway, um, you know, you'll see 
<clears throat> this this is something interesting. Oops. The world was split between Portugal and Spain. And it's like the Tordes or something, right? Treaty of Tordi Tor Tordesillas. Um and you know there's even maps. It's right there. They split the world in half. That's why Spain was much more involved in the conquest and um, colonization and destruction of the native peoples of America and South America and Portugal. You'll hear about them in Africa. You hear about them in India. Um, but as we've shown, the, 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 this is after this date, right? So before that, because we do have some evidence of Portugal being in the Americas, 1494, look at that. So right after the Dom de Versus, right? Okay. Oh, excuse me. Um, Goa, where he took shipping onto Cephala, that's Africa, being on the coast of Africa in the southern latitude of 20 degrees to see the mines that were of so great a name. From Cephala, he turned back to Mozambique and... Um, well, I was looking at something. I found Mozambique in South America too, man. And unto the cities of Kiwiloa, Mombasa, Melindi, till he came back again unto the city of Aden, where he and Afonso de Pena divided themselves. And thence he sailed again through the Red Sea unto the city of Cairo, where he... Oh, wait, I messed up, huh? Did I mess up? No, I didn't mess up. Um... sailed again through the Red Sea into the city of Cairo, where he thought to have met with his companions. But there he heard that he was dead by the letters that he received from King John, his master, in which letters he was farther commanded to travail into the country and dominions of Prebister John. Now, I know a lot of people do a lot of study on this Prebister John, uh, Prester John, right? I've never seen him called Prebister, but um, Prebister, like Presbyterian, means elder. I don't know if it'll come up. We can try Prebister. An elder or minister. I don't know if that's the Christian church or not. It could be a lie. Um, I'm reading this next. I don't think there's anything more about. Mm, okay, so then, um, all right, anyway. So upon this commandment, he provided for his farther journey and from Cairo went back again to the Haven uh, of Toro and from thence to Aden's where he had been twice before and then hearing the fame of the city of Ormuz he determined to go thither and therefore went along the coast of Arabia unto the Cape Razal Gate standing under the Tropic of Cancer and from thence he went to Ormuz. Standing in 27 degrees on that side, there he learned and understood of the Strait of Persia and of that country and entered there into the Red Sea and passed over to the realm of the Abyssini, which is Ethiopia, which commonly is called Prebister John's country or Ethiopia. And there he was detained till the year 1520 when he came thither, the ambassador, uh, whatever, okay. And then it's going to start talking about Portugal and Africa. And, and the, the thing that's interesting about this is that it says that they set up stone pillars all over the place, any place they went. And there's a lot of stone pillars all over the world. And, um, you know, we're told that they're, what, Roman and um, um, Gothic and all these different things. Could they be Portuguese? 
Um, there's lots of stone pillars all over the world. What about uh, Easter Island? Those those big um, statues, those are like stone pillars. Those could be the stone pillars they're talking about. Um, anyway, so it's going to lead right into... So we're just going to keep going. In the year 1490, the king sent unto Congo one Gonzalo de Sosa, a gentleman, with three ships, and in them sent home the ambassador of Congo, which was sent into Portugal, whom Diego... Caon had brought from thence, who at his being in Portugal was baptized both himself and others in his company. Um, the aforesaid Gonzalo de Sosa died in that journey, by the way, and in his room they chose his nephew, Rui de Sosa, for their captain, and so being come into Kogo. The king was very glad for their coming and yielded himself and the greater part of his realm to be baptized whereof the Portugals had good cause to rejoice, seeing by them so many infidels were converted from gentile and paganism to Christianity. Um, oops. Okay, shit. Discoveries of the Antilles and Indies made by the Spaniards. The first beginning of the discoveries of the Spaniards with the continuation of the discoveries of the Portugals. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move forward here. Let's see, I'll see. In the year 1492, in the time of Dern Fernando, king of Castile, he being at the siege of Grenada, dispatched one Christopher Columbus, a Genoa, with three ships to go to discover Nova Spagna, who first had offered his service for the Western discovery unto King John of Portugal, but not entertain him. He being so first sufficiently furnished for his enterprise, departed from the town of Palos the third day of August, having with him as captains and pilots Martin Alfonso Pinzon, Francis Martinez Pinzon, Vincent Yanis Pinzon. Now, I might just read straight through this because, um, of course, you see they're getting into Columbus, and this is what we're, this is what we're going to get out of here. So we'll just, uh, we'll read through this real quick. And Bartholomew Columbus, his brother, with 120 persons more in his company, and some affirmed that they were the first that sailed by latitudes. They took the Canaries in their way, and they're refreshed themselves, taking their course thence through the Saragossa Sea towards Sipango, that'd be good to look up, but finding, fuck it, let me look it up quick, Sipango, see it ain't going, it, it, this stuff doesn't come up that easy, man, um, Okay, see Pango. But finding the sea by the way full of weeds that they were amazed and with great fear arrived at the Antilles, the 10th day of October. And the first island that they discovered, descried, was called Guahani, where they went on land and took possession of it and named it San Salvador. So that was uh, Hispaniola. Uh, this island standeth at 25 degrees northerly latitude, and after that they found many islands, which they called the princes, because they were the first that they had discovered. The savages of these parts called these islands by the name of Lucaos, 
having indeed several names for them, and they do stand on the north side almost under the Tropic of Cancer. As for the island of St. James or Jamaica, see that Jamaica has a lot of different names. You know what? But St. Saint James is Santiago, so there you go, Santiago, St. James the Moor Killer. As for the island of St. James or Jamaica, it standeth between 16 and 17 degrees. Thence they went to the islands, which the naturals of the country call Cuba. And the Spaniards call it Fernandina because their king's name was Fernando, standing in 22 degrees, from whence the Indians conducted them onto another island, which they call Haiti. And the Spaniards called it Isabella, in the memory of their queen of Castile, which was so called, and they named it also Hispaniola. All right, so then where is this, um, and I'm going to have to look into it, because they, you know, they, they always say that, that Columbus landed in Hispaniola first, and over here it's saying, Coheni. Uh, San Salvador. Uh, let's see real quick, where's San Salvador? I forget. I know that's not it. Um, they don't want to give it up. I forget what it was. I think there's actually a, an island in the Caribbean named San Salvador. I don't know. Um, which they call Haiti, and the Spaniards call it Isabella, named it also Hispaniola. In that island, the admiral ship of Columbus was cast away of the timber and planks whereof they made a fort, wherein they left 38 men, and the captain called Rodrigo de Arena, to learn the language and customs of the country. They brought from thence musters and shoes of gold, pearls, and other things which that country yielded, and ten to Indians also, whereof six died. The rest were brought home and baptized. Whereupon they grew such a common desire of travel among the Spaniards that they were ready to leap into the sea to swim, if it had been possible, into those new found parts. It's not like they're trying to escape, man. What are you talking about? They're so... They're so the, there's such a common desire to travel. Come on. Uh, the aforesaid company of Columbus at their coming back home took in their way the Isles of the Azores and the fourth day of March in the year 1493, they entered into the bar of Lisbon, which discovery pleased not the king of Portugal. Whereupon rose a contention between those two kings. Christopher Columbus, being arrived, went presently into Castile with the new, the news of all things, and acquainted the king Fernando with the discontentness of the king of Portugal. Whereupon he and the queen Isabella, his wife, sent straight word thereof unto Pope Alexander the Sixth. Whereat he and the Italians were in great admiration marveling that there was any more land besides that which was under the Romans. But the end of this matter was thus. Alexander the Pope gave these countries by his judgment unto the kingdom of Leon and Castile, with this condition that they should labor to expatriate idolatry and plant the holy faith in those countries, the demon faith. Fernando, the king, having received this answer, was glad of it and sent Christopher Columbus again on the former voyage, having made him admiral and given him other honors with particular arms. And a posse written about his arms to this effect, for Castile and for Leon, a new world found out Cologne. In the year 1493, the 25th of the month of October, Christopher Columbus went back into the Antilles, and fro Cadiz, he took his course, having in his company 17 ships. Now, this is what's interesting, this return mission and what he brought with him, right? And 1,500 men in them with his brethren, Bartholomew Columbus and Diego Columbus with other knights, okay? 
gentlemen, men of law. And they're mentioning this even before they were mentioned the religious men. They're bringing men of law with them, uh, lawyers, um, um, whatever you want to call them, men of law. Why? Why would they bring men of law? And religious men with chalices, crosses, rich ornaments, and with great power and dignity. Now, see, what's getting so confusing is where did this Jesus story come from originally? Did it come from the new world, the so-called new world, as is being shown in, in the readings about the, the Aborigine Hebrews in America? That's the, that's the one thing I'm finding confusing about the whole story. Um, religious man, chalice, crosses, great power and dignity, so-called dignity from Pope Alexander and the ten day after their setting forth they arrived at the canaries and from thence 25 or 30 days they sailed to the antilles uh, and i think i'm gonna uh, call it there okay shalom i'll catch you